Hello everyone, this is John Hashmat and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving the paper one exam for core physics for February, March 2024. So let's get started. Question one says the diagrams show a pendulum that oscillates between P and Q. Which method is used to find the average period of oscillation for the pendulum? Measure the time it takes to swing from P to Q. That's half a cycle. Measure the time it takes to swing from P to Q to P 10 times and then divide by 10. Yes, that is the best way. Measure time it takes to go from P to Q to P 10 times and then multiply by 10. No. Measure the time it takes from Q to P. Again, no. So the answer is B. Question 2 says a car moves through a measured distance S in a known time T. What is the correct equation used to calculate the average speed V for the car? So speed is equal to distance divided by time, so we choose A. Question 3 says on Mars the acceleration of free fall is 3.7 meters per second squared. What is the weight of a 2 kilogram mass on Mars? So weight is equal to mg, so we multiply 2.0 times 3.7. That gives an answer of 7.4 newtons, so we choose C. Question 4 says a rocket is traveling vertically upwards. Three vertical forces act on it. The thrust acts upwards and is equal to 100,000 newtons. So we have an upward force 100,000 newtons. And the weight acts downwards and it is equal to 80,000 newtons. And there is a third force. What is the air resistance force acting on the rocket when it is traveling upwards at constant speed? For constant speed, the forces must balance, so we need an extra 20,000 newtons downwards, so that 20,000 plus 80,000 will be equal to the 100,000 upwards. So it is 20,000 newtons, and it acts downwards, so we choose A. Question 5 says, an irregular plane object is suspended freely from point O. The object is displaced and then released. It swings a few times and comes to rest as shown. Where is the center of gravity of the object? So if the object is hanging and at rest, it is in equilibrium. So the center of mass and the weight will be directly below the pivot. So it is not horizontal. It is not horizontal. It is vertically below O. So we choose D. Question 6 says three situations are listed. Someone blowing air into a party balloon. A crane lifting a block of concrete. A pile of books at rest on a shelf. In which situation is the work being done? So work needs force and distance. So for the balloon, the distance is the distance traveled by the expanding balloon. And for the crane, we are lifting something upwards. And at rest, that means there is no distance. Distance is equal to zero. So it's not three. It is one and two only. So we choose B. Question seven says, which row describes an advantage and a disadvantage of wind turbines? So no fuel needed, that's an advantage. Variable supply, that's not an advantage. No harmful gas released, that's an advantage. Constant supply, it is not constant. In wind turbines, it depends on weather and daytime and location. For disadvantages, harmful gases released, they are not released in a wind turbine. Fuel needed, no, it's not needed. Variable supply, that's a disadvantage and it's noisy. So the common answer is C. Question 8 says the diagram shows a rectangular metal block with dimensions 2.5 cm by 3 cm by 4.5 cm. The block is resting on the ground. The block exerts a pressure of 0.23 newtons per centimeter. So that's force divided by area on the ground. What is the weight of the metal block? So the force is equal to the weight. If pressure is equal to weight divided by area, weight is equal to pressure multiplied by area. So the pressure is 0.23. And the area which the weight acts on is the base area, which is 4.5 by 2.5. So we multiply this by 4.5 and 2.5. We get an answer of 2.5875, which we can approximate to 2.6. So we choose C. Question 9 says, which row correctly describes the movement of particles in solids and in liquids? In solids, they do not move. No, all objects have moving particles. Vibrate only, yes. Liquids move around each other. Vibrate only, no. So move around each other. And the common choice is C. Question 10 says, what is the boiling temperature of water at standard atmospheric pressure? So it's 100 degrees Celsius, but all the answers are in Kelvin. So we need to add 273 to get that in Kelvin. That will give an answer of 373 Kelvin, so we choose D. 
Question 11 says which row describes how the volume and mass of liquid mercury change as it is heated? So heating increases the volume and the mass stays the same. It does not change when temperature changes. So we choose D. Question 12 says in which situation does the store of internal energy of water increases? So water at 0 degrees Celsius freezing, that's a decrease in internal energy. Water being heated from 25 to 40 degrees Celsius, yes. Steam condensing, that requires loss of energy. Water in a puddle on a breezy day, that will evaporate and the temperature will decrease. So again, no. So the answer is B. Question 13 says, which statement describes what happens to the particles during the evaporation of a liquid? So, particles become fixed in position, no. Particles escape from the surface, yes. Particles move much closer together, no. Particles start to move around at random, no. So, we choose B. Question 14 says, which of the following is not an example of convection? A spoon handle becomes hot when it is placed in a hot drink. That's not convection because it's a solid object and convection only happens in liquids and gases. Thermal updraft in atmosphere that glider pilots use. So an updraft due to heat is a convection current. Flames and smoke rising from a fire rising because hot gases and liquids rise. So in this case, gas. Warming up water in a kettle on a gas ring on a gas ring because the heated air flows upwards. So all these are convection currents from B to D. So the one without convection is A. Question 15 says a hollow aluminium cube is filled with very hot water. Side X of the cube is opposite to side Y of the cube. One of these two sides is black and one is white. A student holds the back of one hand 5 cm from side X and then immediately holds the back of the other hand 5 cm from Y. For fair comparison, the hand held near side Y feels warmer than the hand near side X. Which row identifies the black side and correctly compares the rate of emission of thermal radiation? So the hotter one will be the black one and will have the greater rate of thermal emission. So we choose C. Question 16 says the diagram shows a ray of light traveling from air into glass and changing direction so that it is closer to the normal. What is the name of this process and why does it happen? So this is refraction and it happens because the speed of light decreases. Bending towards the normal means the speed of light decreases. So the answer is D. Question 17 says, which row gives an example of a longitudinal wave and describes the direction of vibrations? So sound is a longitudinal wave and the direction of vibration is parallel to direction of energy transfer of wave propagation. So we choose D. Question 18 says, which statement about the total internal reflection is correct? Total internal reflection occurs when light is incident on a glass to air boundary or air to glass boundary. It's not air to glass. It must be from a denser medium to a less dense medium at an angle of incidence greater than the critical. Yes. So we choose A. Question 19 says, a ray of green light passes through a glass prism as shown. Which colors of light refract as shown in the table? So more than green and less than green. So we have the list red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. We have green here and the choices are red and yellow and violet. So red actually refracts less than the green and violet refracts more. And yellow is in between the red and green. So more than green, that's violet, and less than green, that's yellow, because blue is in this side of the spectrum, so it will be more than green. So the common choice is D. Question 20 says, which electromagnetic waves are used for sterilizing medical equipment? That's gamma rays. Question 21 says, which process causes a sound wave to produce an echo? Echo is the reflection of sound, so the choice is C. Question 22 says a student stands 75 meters from a wall and makes a short loud sound by tapping two pieces of wood together. What is the approximate time between making the sound and the student hearing the echo? So speed is equal twice the distance over time. So if we know the average speed of sound in air is equal to 340 meters per second and the distance from the student to the wall is 75, we can say that 340 is equal to 2 times 75 divided by the unknown time. We replace these two. 
So the time will be 2 times 75 over 340. That will give a value of 0 0.4411 approximately. So the nearest one is 0 0.5 seconds. So we choose B. Question 23 says which statement is always true? A magnetic material attracts a non-magnetic material? No. A magnetic material repels another magnetic material? No, not necessarily. A magnetic material attracts another magnetic material if one of them is a magnetized uh, object? Yes, if one magnetized, one is a magnet and one is just a magnetic material, not magnet, they will always attract. So this sentence is correct. So we choose C. Question 24 says a polythene rod is charged by friction. The polythene rod becomes negatively charged. Which statement is correct? So we only gain or lose electrons. So C and D are rejected. And becoming negative, that means we gain electrons, not lose electrons. So we choose A. Question 25 says what is the unit of electromotive force? That's voltage. So the unit is volts. So the answer is D. Question 26 says the diagram shows a circuit containing two identical lamps and three ammeters. The current in ammeter one is 0 0.30 amperes. So that's the current coming from the battery. So the current going to the battery will also be 0 0.30 amperes. That's ammeter three. So in the choices, we have 0 0.3 here and here. Which row gives the possible values for the currents in ammeter two and three? We already did three. For ammeter two, the 0 0.3 ampere will be divided across the two lamps. So it will be less than 0 0.3. So it will be 0 0.15. So we choose B. Question 27 says, into which wire is a switch connected in order to switch a mains appliance on and off safely? That's the live wire. So we choose A. Question 28 says, which device uses the magnetic effect of an electric current? Is it a heater, a lamp, a relay, or a thermistor? That's a relay because it's a magnetic switch. So we choose C. Question 29 says, a transformer has 200 turns on the primary coil and connected to a 240 volts AC supply. The output voltage of the transformer is 60 volts AC. How many turns on the secondary coil of the transformer? So we use NS over NP is equal to VS over VP. So NS is unknown, NP is equal to 200, VS is 60, and VP is equal to 240. By cross multiplication, we multiply 200 by 60 and then we divide by 240. That will give an answer of 50 turns. So we choose B. Question 30 says, which statement about an atom is correct? An atom has positive charge or negative charge? No, it should be neutral. So it's neutral because the positive charge in the nucleus equals the total negative charge of the electrons or the negative charge in the nucleus equals the total positive charge of the electrons. Electrons are not positive and are not in the nucleus. So the answer is C, positive charge in the nucleus due to protons and electrons in the orbital shells. Question 31 says the table gives information about four nuclei. Which nuclei are isotopes of the same element? They must have the same proton number. So these two, two and three. So the answer is C. Question 32 says which apparatus is used to measure background radiation? So background radiation means there is no other source of radiation. So any choice containing source of radiation is not accepted. So the choice is B, a counter and a detector only. Question 33 says which row correctly identifies the nature of each radioactive emission? So an alpha particle is a helium nucleus, a beta particle is an electron, gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave, so the common choice is C. Question 34 says a nucleus spontaneously emits radiation and becomes a nucleus of a different element. What could the emitted radiation be? So if we change to another element, that means that's alpha or beta, no gamma radiation and neutrons are not radioactive emissions. So the answer is A. Question 35 says the diagram shows a lead lined box used for storing a radioactive source. Why is the inside of the box is lined with lead? Because it helps the source to stay radioactive for a longer time? No. It makes the box heavier? No relation. It makes the radioactive source more stable? No. It reduces the amount of radiation that can escape? Yes, because it absorbs the radiation. Lead absorbs the radiation. So the answer is D. Question 36 says a student draws a simplified diagram showing the sun and different movements of the moon and the earth. Which arrow represents a motion taking 365 days to complete? That's one year. So it will be A, the motion of the earth around the sun, 
B is the motion of the moon around itself, that's one month. And D is the motion of the moon around the earth, that's also one month. And C is the spin of the earth about its axis, that's 24 hours. Question 37 says the table gives information about four of the planets in our solar system. Two of these planets are gaseous and two are rocky. Which two planets are rocky? That's inner planets. So they will have lower distance. So the smallest distance will be the 10 to the power of 7. Next is 2.3 times 10 to the power of 8. Next the 7.8 times 10 to the power of 8. And the largest distance is 1.4 times 10 to the power of 9. So these two planets are the rocky planets, the inner planets. So we choose C, 2 and 3. Question 38 says which row shows the most common elements in the sun and the regions of electromagnetic spectrum in which most of the sun's energy is radiated. So elements in the sun are hydrogen and helium and the regions of emissions uh, with maximum intensity from the sun is infrared and visible light and ultraviolet, not gamma and radio waves. They are emitted but not with large quantities. So here the answer is D. Question 39 says what is the meaning of a light year that is the distance traveled in one year? So the choice is A. It is not number of years. It's not time. It is not speed. Again, it is not time. So we choose A. Question 40 says, what is the approximate diameter of the Milky Way? That's a galaxy which contains hundreds of billions of stars. And the nearest star from our solar system is about five light years away. So we need a very large distance for the whole galaxy. So we choose the largest distance. So we choose D. And this was the end of the exam. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful to you. Keep practicing and I will see you in another video.